Hi, I'm Steve Stedman and welcome to the short training on using the T-SQL date diff function. Date diff. Date diff and date add are kind of the opposite there. So what date diff does is it takes two dates in time and it gives you the difference between those in the different components. So if we said get date between now and something in 1492, that would give us the calculation of the number of years if we passed in a year or we could get it in quarters or months. We'll start out here, we'll just say give me a date diff in weeks from January 1st of this year to the current date. And when we looked at the date part earlier on weeks, we got 12. And when we run this, we get 11. And the reason for that is that we are, however, we are in the 12th week of the year. January 1st of this year was in the first week and the difference from between 12 and one is 11 at that point. Now, what if we had our order backwards? Does the order matter there? Well, if we run it with give me the number of weeks between the current date and January 1st. Well, in that case, it's going to go negative and show that that January 1st was negative 11 months. So let's take a look now. What I've done is I've taken January 1st versus the current date, and I've passed in a bunch, all, all the different parameters here that are available. We can get our results back and see that for year and quarter, well, January 1st is in the same year and the same quarter that today is, so those show up as zero. For month, we're getting two months apart, days, day of year, and day. We're getting the same number there, and then you can see the calculations all the way down. Where it gets interesting, as we scroll to the bottom here, you notice there was no result on these last two. And the last two that were shown were to calculate microsecond and millisecond. And if we look at our messages window, you'll notice we got some errors showing up here that state it resulted in overflow. The function returns an integer, and the number of milliseconds or microseconds from January 1st until now of this year is more than you can fit in an integer. So we get overflow here. So that's just something you want to keep in mind. And you can't, I mean, the function does always return an integer at that point. So if you get overflow, I don't really know a way around it other than let's just do a smaller range. So if we take millisecond and microsecond and calculate between today and with no date, it assumes midnight. So between midnight today and now, and we run it, well, we still get an error, but we, we got the number of milliseconds from midnight until now, but microseconds still break. So we're going to try between now and 11 a.m., which is roughly about an hour and 40 minutes or so from here. And that still gives us uh, too much big of a number. So if we try between 10 a.m., too large, we go between, right now, it is 9.19. So we'll go between like 9.15. And you can see that it is several million, 286 million microseconds from 9.15. Not every day are you in a situation where you have to be calculating milliseconds or microseconds, but I just wanted to show how the overflow works there. What it, what you're gonna, this is really handy when you're trying to figure out intervals between any two given dates, and it does all the math for you. And again, things like we talked about with leap years or whatnot, it takes those into account appropriately.